Hi there and welcome back to another Gaming on Linux video. In this video we'll take a trip down memory lane by looking at two legendary GPUs, the GTX 1080 and the RX 580. I'm going to show 20 seconds of side-by-side -side footage for each GPU on each operating system in 8 games, all running at 1080p native resolution. After the footage, I'll give an overall summary with charts on how each GPU performed on Linux and Windows. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to get notified of future content. I'm really excited about my upcoming RX 9070 XT versus 4080 Super video, for example. The GTX 1080 was 2016's flagship model, but AMD struck a home run the year after, with the RX 580 being one of the company's most successful GPU launches of all time. To this day, in the Steam hardware survey, the RX 580 is AMD's second most popular discrete GPU, coming just behind the RX 6600 and slightly ahead of the RX 6700 XT. The GTX 1080 has about as many users in the survey as the RX 580. Now for the main test platform. I used a Ryzen 5 5600 with 32GB of DDR4 3200CL16 memory with a Gen 4 NVMe SSD. The Linux OS installed was Bazite, which is based on Fedora. The Windows OS was Windows 11 with the 24H2 update. Full details of all specs and driver versions are on screen now and you can pause if you need to take more time to inspect them. Because the Nvidia results were a bit disappointing, I did some secondary testing using a different Linux OS, Manjaro, which is based on Arch Linux, and a CPU and Intel i5-12600K. I'll show a chart with those results later in the video. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into the benchmarks. Let's begin with Cyberpunk 2077, and for each game tested, I'll start with the RX 580 footage. Here we see performance on Linux beats Windows 11 by 8% on average, with a 9% improvement to the 1% lows. This is definitely a good start for AMD. With the NVIDIA GPU, however, we see Linux only reaching 68% of the performance of Windows 11, and it's much the same with the 1% lows. Ouch! Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 has been very smooth on every GPU and OS I've tested so far, so well done to the devs for that. The RX 580 again performs better on Linux, with a 6% improvement to the overall average and 7% for the 1% lows. The GTX 1080 does better on Linux here than with Cyberpunk 2077, but still only reaches 85% the performance it does on Windows in both overall averages and 1% lows. We'll see that this is pretty much a best case scenario, perhaps due to how well optimized this game is. Black Myth Wukong is punishing on these older GPUs when not using upscaling. Typically, the more CPU bound the game, the better the open source Mesa drivers for AMD hardware do in Linux versus Windows. Here we see a 13% advantage for Linux in both overall average FPS and 1% lows. The GTX 1080 only reaches 78% of Windows 11 performance on Linux, though it is a bit closer in the 1% lows. Space Marine 2 is another demanding game. The RX 580 delivers 8% more FPS on Linux compared to Windows 11, with 6% better 1% lows. The GTX 1080 is pretty atrocious on Linux though, 
reaching just 65% of the performance it does in Windows 11. Due to some technical issues, I had to use Vulkan with the GTX 1080 and DirectX 11 with the RX 580 in Baldur's Gate 3. With the RX 580, overall FPS was very similar. I'm not sure Mango HUD recorded the 1% lows accurately here though, so do take that 80 plus percent win in 1% lows with a grain of salt. With the GTX 1080, Linux was only able to attain about two-thirds the overall FPS and only half the performance in 1% lows. There wasn't much to choose between Linux and Windows in Horizon Forbidden West on the RX 580, with Linux edging the overall FPS by about 2% and losing in the 1% lows by 4%. Another disappointing showing for the GTX 1080, with it reaching just 68% of the Windows 11 performance on Linux. A first win for Windows 11 using the RX 580 in Silent Hill 2 with Linux only reaching 93% of the average FPS of Windows 11, though it did edge it on the 1% lows. With the GTX 1080, Linux had one of its better showings, but that still meant only 76% of Windows 11 performance in both overall FPS and 1% lows. Finally, let's throw in a high FPS multiplayer shooter. With the RX 580 in Counter-Strike 2, performance is much the same with 157 versus 156 FPS, though Linux had the edge in 1% lows. The GTX 1080 was an outlier on Linux, with a victory for Linux by 10%, and even better on 1% lows. For some reason, Counter-Strike 2 just loves NVIDIA hardware and underperforms on AMD across all generations. Let's move on to some charts summarizing what you've just seen. Starting with the RX 580, we see that it is on average about 4% faster in this selection of games and even better on the 1% lows. I would ignore the 81% better 1% lows in Baldur's Gate 3 because I feel there was some kind of error in the way Mango HUD recorded the 1% lows. Overall, these differences are similar to what I saw with the RX 6650 XT in a previous video on this channel. Moving on to the GTX 1080, the story is similar to what I saw with the RTX 3060 Ti from my previous Linux vs Windows video. The GTX 1080 performance on Linux is on average 24% worse than on Windows. But that NVIDIA performance is so bad, it would make you question whether there was something up with the test system. So I got another test PC, this one running an Intel i5-12600K with 32GB of DDR4-3600 memory and installed the GTX 1080. I also installed Manjaro which, unlike Bazite, is based on Arch Linux. A brand new test system then, with even a slightly different NVIDIA graphics driver. I tested five of the games, and tested Baldur's Gate 3 with both Vulkan and DX11. The result? Almost identical. So there you have it. Just like my previous testing, AMD GPUs offer a nice boost to average FPS with an even larger boost to smoothness. NVIDIA GPUs, on the other hand, are really unacceptably hampered by drivers that gimp your GPU performance by at least 20%. I have lots more content like this on the way, and there is so much happening in the world of Linux gaming that I'm never going to be short of new content to create. So for that reason, I hope you consider subscribing. And of course, like, 
comment and share to let the YouTube algorithm know that Linux gaming content is important. And with that, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.